All right, ladies and, ladies and gentlemen, today we're going to talk about um, how to take a black and white photo and make it into color. So the first thing you're going to do is find a black and white photo. This is the one that I found, and uh, I prefer you did one that was actually black and white and not like a modern photo that's like gone through Instagram or whatever. I, I, I really think that the cool idea about this is you're taking something from history that um, has never been seen in color and is being turned into color. So I don't really want to see skateboarders or anything like that. I, I want you to do this in black and white. When you do your search, make sure that you uh, go to search tools up here and go to change the um, color to black and white. And then as far as size, you would definitely want to be larger than two megapixels. Four is even better. And that's because you're going to spend a lot of time on this project. And if you end up with something that's really, really small and lo low pixels, when you go to print it out, it's going to look terrible. So the higher the quality, the better for this one. All right. So I got my photo and I saved it. I'm just, you just right click on it to save it. Um, wait till this little thing at the bottom is done spinning though. If it takes, you'll, on some of these, it'll take a long time. See, there it is right there. So wait till that's done before you save it. Otherwise it will be low quality. So I saved the um, picture that I did in my uh, folder here. And you want to open it in uh, Photoshop. Um, you might be able to right click and open it with Photoshop. If not, just open up Photoshop. Don't open up a new file or anything because you want this to be your file. You don't want to have to worry about cropping it or changing the size or anything like that. Now one of the first things you may notice because the image was black and white, you may have to go up here and go to image mode and just make sure that it's not on black and white anymore. And make sure it's RGB color or CMYK color. If, it's, if it says uh, grayscale, you're not going to be able to do anything else with it. All right, now the very first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to um, uh, take this layer and I'm going to duplicate it. And I'm going to lock that one. And uh, what that does is just ensures that I don't accidentally um, you know, paint on it or make any other mistakes. You do not want to paint on your base image. Again, that's the number one mistake that students make is they paint on their base image. Do not do that. That is bad news. So you want to make a new layer first. Now when we add color, we're going to be working with layer masks. You guys have gotten a little taste of what those are. So um, let's go ahead and start off with skin. And what you're going to use is the bucket fill tool. And you're going to pick a skin tone. Now this is actually a really good example of skin tone. What you want it to be is somewhere between yellow and red, so orange obviously, but closer to a little bit to the red. And then somewhere up here in this quadrant. And if you're not happy with it, you know, you can always adjust it. But you generally right around here. Um, obviously, different people have different skin tones, but generally, even if the person is uh, darker, using this color um, tends to be pretty accurate. I found you don't really have to adjust it too much, because again, we're not we're not adjusting lightness and darkness. We're only adding color. So um, if something is white on here, you're not going to be able to add color to it because white is white. You can't make it lighter. Um, if something's black, again, you're not going to see any color. So we're working with all the grays. And uh, if something's white and you, you want to make it another color, that's not very, it's not really accurate. We want to try to be as accurate as we can with these colors and try to make them look as they um, did back then. So that's my skin tone. Now let's see what it looks like when we uh, turn it into uh, color. And you might find better results with overlay. In this case, I, I think color is generally what we want. Now, it, you'll know, you may find that's a little bit too colorful, I guess you could say. Um, and you could adjust the opacity and, and play with other things. I really don't want you to do that for now. For now, just go ahead and um, don't worry about it and uh, move on to the next step. At the very end, when you're done, you can play around with adjusting all the colors and getting it to look right. Um, I've seen some colorized photos of this person, and they were not very good. I'm hoping I can do a better job. So. Just follow my steps. I'm pretty used to this. I'm, I'm pretty good at it. I post on Reddit um, these sometimes, and, and uh, you know I give advice to a lot of people. And anyway, this is one of the few things I know what I'm talking about. Go down here to uh, add a layer mask, and you want to bucket fill it black so you don't see anything. Remember, a layer mask will show anything that's white and hide anything that's black. Now, one of the biggest problems students will make is they'll start painting. And they'll use like a, oh, I want to do skin tone. So they'll do this and they'll think that they're doing it correctly. Mm -hmm. What they're doing though is they're just painting gray. Because when you're in a layer mask, it doesn't see color. So 
just switch to black and white when you're in your layer mask. So now I'm going to use my tablet and um, I'm just going to get my brush bigger. And you don't need to use a paintbrush or anything fancy, just a soft brush. I would use um, something with like 50% softness or hardness. And I usually just kind of go in and go sloppy the first time. And then I go back and I clean it up because, I don't know, that's just my workflow. If you want to be super careful the first time around, by all means. Now I can tell when I stick this on by itself, it was kind of hard to see with the whole picture, but it's definitely way too orange, so she's going to look like an Oompa Loompa. And I'm not going to worry about that. Um, you know, you don't need to feel embarrassed or feel like you're doing it wrong or whatever just because it doesn't look right right now. It's okay. This is, uh, this is just how the process works. So I'm going to go through here and try not to get too much of the flowers. And all right. Now, if you're dying to change the color now, you just can't stand this. Um, I'll go ahead and show you what you would do. Now, you could do this now or you could do it later. Uh, first off, let's make sure we always name our layers because you're going to be wondering later when you have 15 layers, where's my skin? So it's much better off if you can just name your layers as you do them. Okay, so now I'm on the mask, right? Now, I can't make any changes to color or anything like that. But if I go to the layer, you'll notice these are two different things. If I go to the layer, not the mask, but the layer, you'll see the white box around it. Now I can adjust these colors. Um, I think I'm running out of time, so I'll do this and then I'll stop. But really quickly, you go up to uh, Image, Adjustments, and you can adjust Hue Saturation. That's probably the easiest one. Now just play around with the saturation. Just pull it down a bit. And if you don't think the color is quite right, go a little bit left, a little bit right. I think I was actually pretty close to where I should be. Uh, the saturation I pulled down. And that's, to me, that's like getting pretty darn close. The eyes look a little weird. The teeth look weird. That's stuff we're going to fix later. So anyway, um, this is part one of the video. And uh, make sure you watch all this before you move on to part two. Although, I guess if you didn't watch all this, you wouldn't hear me say that, would you? All right, have a good day.